Detective Mike Colazzo is a nine-year veteran of this police department, and he is assigned to the same unit as Sergeant Mathis. In fact, he works uh, for Sergeant Mathis. And Sergeant Mathis is his supervisor. Detective Mike Colazzo. Um, I want to start with um, making making sure the families know that we're thinking about them. Um, I know a lot of people have reached out to myself, Officer Rex, Sergeant Mathis, uh, our teammates as well. There's been an outpour of support from the community, um, from other agencies throughout the, the nation and through the world. And I just want to tell them we uh, greatly appreciate that. But I also hope that uh, they were, that along with all of us, that we remember the victims and. Uh, about that day in question, um, like Sergeant Mathis had stated, we were we had just started our shift and we were at the office. Um, I was completing some administrative uh, task, sending some emails when uh, the radio was. I believe I had my radio sitting on my desk. Uh, one of our partners, uh, Detective Wagner, he sits uh, to the left of me. I believe his radio was there. And uh, we heard the ten co or the thousand code go out of the uh, active shooter, and um, we heard the dispatch location, and that it was in Midtown. Uh, regardless if it was in Midtown or not, uh, like every other officer in our department, uh, we took off running out of the office, uh, plugged in the address on our GPSs, and we, we took off towards the location. Um, as we were uh, on our way to the to the to the school itself. Our dispatch was doing a phenomenal job. They were giving us as much updates as they could. Um, tell, they told us that the individual had entered into the school. They were actively shooting, uh, gave us a description, and they were receiving this information from the individuals that were already on scene. Um, when I arrived on scene, another officer had already arrived on scene. Um, I, to this day, I still don't know who that officer is. There was hundreds of officers that responded. But I've learned that that officer had arrived on the other side of the school. Um, I came off of Harding Pike and entered uh, coming up the hill towards the school. When I started to approach, or when I pulled my car up, I observed uh, a female uh, on a cell phone, uh, who later found out was uh, one of the employees of the school. Um, the female was pointing to the left, uh, so I ended up pulling my vehicle towards the left. Uh, I ran into another individual, a male that was outside, uh, rolled my window down, uh, asked where, where they were. Uh, that individual, who I later learned was also an employee of the school, um, told me that they were around the side and asked where. And at that point, without, without hesitation, the employee just took off running towards uh, the door that was later learned to be where the shooter had entered. He uh, took off running and telling me to follow him, which helped out tremendously. Um, so I stayed in my vehicle and drove that direction. Um, he was kind of hugging around the vehicles that were parked on the side because, like they said, we didn't know where the shooter was. He just knew that the shooter had uh, entered into this uh, door right, uh, like right at the entrance. So he said when he got closer to the door, he pointed and told me that uh, they had entered right there. So I ended up parking my vehicle, exiting, and uh, noticed that all the glass to that door had been shot out. Saw shell casings on the ground, uh, bullet holes on the door. Uh, so I immediately made entry. Um, as I made entry into the school, I saw an individual that I believe has been identified as the janitor. Um, he was laid out on the ground, um, not moving. Um, I relayed that information to the, uh, over our radio to the dispatch that I had made entry and that uh, I had an individual that was down. Still didn't have a stimulus. Uh, the shooter wasn't shooting at that point. So started just like Officer Rex, Sergeant Mathis, and every other officer that had gotten there, um, started clearing rooms as uh, fast as possible, trying to find where uh, the shooter was. I was on the first floor. Um, I had cleared uh, part of the first floor and along with the gymnasium uh, when I had somehow made my way towards a door that led me back outside. That's where I made contact with uh, one of our uh, teammates, uh, Officer or Detective Wagner, and uh, two patrol officers. 
At that point, we had we were told that the shooter was uh, possibly on the second floor. So at that point, that's when on the body cam you see where we ended up going up the stairwell and made our way to a locked door. At the time, I was upset that we had just hit a locked door, but now looking back, I'm thankful we hit a locked door because that was the school doing what they've been trained to do. Um, the door was locked, so knowing uh, we didn't have a way of getting in and hearing on the radio that Officer Rex and Sergeant Mathis uh, had a team and that they were making entry, um, the decision was made that we'd push back out and uh, link back with the, or try to link up with those officers that were making entry on another side. Uh, we ended up cutting through the gymnasium that, like I said, I had already previous gone, uh, previously had gone through. Um, by that point, Detective Plesey had uh, linked up with us along with Detective Cagle, who both are on the same team. Um, when we came in the hallway, that's when uh, you could see down the hallway, uh, Sergeant Mathis was uh, standing watching a hallway uh, and later learned Officer Rex and some others had gone to the right and were clearing rooms. Uh, we ran down that hallway because uh, knowing that they had they were already ahead of us, uh, it was believed those rooms had been cleared. So we linked up with Sergeant Mathis. Um, I told Sergeant Mathis we were with them, uh, and then we continued uh, systematically clearing uh, the rooms that we came upon. Um, at some point around that time frame is when we started hearing the first shots. Um, once we started hearing the first shots, that's when everything kind of kicked into overdrive for us. Uh, we had gone up the stairwell, uh, made our way down the hallway. That's when we ran it, or that's when I ran into that second victim, um, laid on the ground. We had to push past the victim because uh, we continued to hear more shots being fired. Um, like Sergeant Matt stated, it was very distinctive. You could clear as day tell that there were rifles, uh, rifle rounds being fired. We came upon a T intersection. Uh, Sergeant Mathis was on one side and I was on the other side. Um, we didn't know if the shooter was to the left or the right. It was, smoke was everywhere. Um, the fire alarm was going off. It was somewhere right around that point, we heard a, another shot and it, so it told us that the shooter was to our right. Um, when we, that's when I made the call and yelled that the shooter was right and we pushed right and uh, continued down that hallway. Officer Rex had caught up to us um, I noticed that Officer Rex had a rifle with a, uh, with a uh, LPVO on it. Uh, not knowing where the shooter was and the distance that we would possibly encounter with the shooter, uh, asked Officer Rex to push forward for us, which he did without hesitation. Um, we continued down that path until we encountered the shooter. Once the situation was uh, Ended with the shooter, like uh, Sergeant Mathis and everybody stated, our job wasn't done. We knew that there was victims. We had we had to pass those victims. Um, so I immediately uh, switched gears, left that scene, and ran the route that we had just taken back outside. Other officers had responded, and they were uh, making entry on different rooms. Uh, it had been broadcasted that the um, shooter had been taken down. And I think it, it clicked for every officer that was on scene that at that point, it was uh, time to start trying to um, render aid to the victims and start evacuating the school. So we implemented our uh, rescue task force protocol. I ended up coming out of a separate door that we had not made entry into, um, linked up with one of the uh, ADT supervisors that was outside with commander and uh, coordinated with the sergeant on where or where everything was take where everything had taken place and to have officers start responding in with us. I remained there for a while until uh, more officers got on scene. When they all when when I felt like uh, enough officers were on scene, uh, commander had stepped up and uh, advised us to uh, step back and go to our vehicles. Um, that was pretty much at that point, I was done with the uh, scene. I wanted to help. I know Officer Rex wanted to help. I know Sergeant Mathis wanted to help and continue to do what we could. But at that point, enough of our 
co-workers were there and it, they, they were handling it for us. Um, so we were able to step aside. Um, that's when I was able to uh, call my wife and uh, tell her I was okay, advise her of everything. And that, um, yeah. I want to add something to